what is courage? What is leadership? You know, we have definitions of what we teach our athletes of what these things are and how to recognize them in somebody and yourself when they're not being met, when they're met. I don't know if that really improves performance. I think it improves the human, makes them a better human, right? Um, but I, we like teaching them. We, we think it's, you know, it's part of our culture and what we teach. And we're very, very clear on the distinctions of, of and the definitions of what these are because language is very important in any team. You know, it, it's, it breeds action, right? It's the difference between us and animals. Like, uh, animals communicate, but we have language, which is a very precise form of communication, so we can take action faster than they can, which makes us evolve faster and build skyscrapers and stuff like that. So, you know, if you, have to, if you speak the same language, you can take action with each other very quickly. How are you able to then, <clears throat> if, you're, if you're having, you know, individual athletes coming in, when they come back because are they coming in during their same season? My, my question that I'm trying to get to is like, all right, yeah. you've got these athletes and you've got these unbelievable, f fantastic athletes. Yeah. They go away. And then how are you able to kind of keep those leadership principles instilled in them when they're away? Um, yeah. Because you're not around them the whole time versus if you were with them, if you were their high performance director, or if you were their strength coach and you're just able to constantly be around them, your youth athletes, that makes sense. Yeah. But if yeah. anybody, you know, goes away, you know, to the Chicago bears or to the ducks. Yeah. Right. Um, I, I give them stuff to read on it, right? We give them stuff to have. And, and, and it, it's, you know, part of the, part of the game of, of this field we chose is, you know, there's some people that just come in for the off season and they go do their thing. But most of the guys we're still communicating, touching base with. You know, just really? send them a nice note, send them a DM, send some. Hey, someone had a rough game, send them something on perseverance. Just send it to them. Remember what perseverance is. It just lights them up. They just like, all right, forget that. They don't dwell on it, right? You can just see it. You see because you see the next game they go out and perform. So we're always communicating with them and still keeping an eye on them. Like we care, right? We care, and it's uh, you know it's not always perfect, but we're, we'll we'll always be. They they know they're going to get it from us, whether they throw in the trash or not. They're still going to get it, and they're still going to get a reminder once in a while um, that this is what it's about, right? Like it's supposed to be teaching you these life lessons. Your your athletic career, I don't care if, if this is your life. This is still your athletic career, right there, right? It's still small. You know, it can perpetuate a lot of financial success and things like that or relationships or get you a college scholarship and get you educated, but it's still a small portion of your life. And if we can influence some things to make you a better human and hopefully it helps your performance, why not? So, but we'll, we'll give them materials to read. We'll keep on them about it. We, we hear they're struggling with something. We'll send them something, courage or perseverance to read on. But uh, yeah, so. What has been the most fun and then the most challenging, um, not specific athlete, but the mo the sport that has been the most difficult and then the most rewarding for you in your personal. And if there's like, hey, two or three, but I I I'm interested to hear that based off of the diverse background of people you've trained. Yeah, I, I think my my best experiences. Well, I've had I've had some good experiences. Not to brag, but you know, I've been in two Stanley Cup locker rooms. Oh, okay. I, I was in the corner uh, with Michael Bisbee, won the world championship, and when he Ooh. beat Anderson Silva in London, I was in his corner. Um, I've been to two Olympics where athletes of mine were competing and being in the Olympic Village, actually, with, with credentials. You know, pretty incredible, you know, experiences to have. So, you know, chalking that up, I think being in the Olympic Village uh, twice with Olympic, with your athletes competing, athletes you've worked, you're working with and counting on competing. That's probably one of my highlights. But it was bobsledding and downhill skiing, which downhill skiing was a great thrill and challenge for me to train. You know, the forces, the eccentric forces, the, the oh, incredible, like incredible. The, the vectors, the turning, you know what I mean? The, the things that have to happen in that sport and the, and the, the courage and the bravery they have and the fearlessness right. they have. Yeah, that was, that, was, that was probably one of my best experiences. Overall, hockey players are probably my favorite athletes to train. They're just usually from small towns. Usually their parents were getting up at four in the morning, driving them to the rink when they were young. You know, dads mm. were very involved, and and they've got they got a lot of those qualities. So they're 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 fun to train in that way. 
Um, but yeah, I think uh, figure skating very challenging. Uh, you know, it's, it's I, I I would say that the sports where I've gotten in trouble with figure skaters and gymnast, gymnasts before because I said that you don't win anything. And they go, what are you talking about? And I said, you're awarded something. You don't win anything, which makes it hard for me to train you because I, I don't like that. And you see behaviors in young figure skaters or young gymnasts that, uh, or even equestrian, you know what I mean? Whether it's judged, they're judged, right? The, the judging determines the winning. So it's, it's somewhat subjective. And you see parents and people kind of, create personas around judges or around coaches to get to win favor and it's just ugly i don't i don't like seeing it right so that's a challenge for me in those sports when there's you know you, 100 meter race you won I, it's no debate <laughs> right there's no bitching and moaning about it you won and where these other sports where there's a judge that, that you're awarded something you don't win it and that's those are those are sports that are hard for me to to to, to get wrap my head around uh, even though we've, you know, had some success and we're proud of our athletes in those sports, but yeah, it's different. It's a, di- it's a whole different beast. I like, I like seeing our guys win. <laughs> no, and like 20. you said too, yeah, like it, it, the puck either went in the goal or it did not, or yeah. you got the that's sack right. or you didn't. It's, it's not as yeah, much right. of a, a judging yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's easier to look at that and make adjustments and and and, and look at your work and see how well it's doing and being rewarded for it too as well. So. But yeah, I would say that that's probably it right there for me. So, um, as you're pairing and working with nutrition for all your athletes over there, what are kind of some of the you know base three that you're talking with any of your amateur youth athletes and then your professional athletes? What are kind of some interventions that you're utilizing with them or things that you've learned recently that you're like you've definitely made changes with? quick break from the show to remind you to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps us out and it helps you be notified when we have new content get released. So again, please hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoy this content. And with that, let's get back to the show. With nutrition? Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, when it comes to the, to the amateur athlete, um, we want to look at three things. First, believe it or not, I want to look at hydration. If, if, if we... That's something I've really dug into the last few years, and it's unbelievable when we start testing, we're looking at strips and different technology. Holy cow, these athletes are high, dehydrated all the time. Really? These young athletes are constantly dehydrated. And if you look at the research of 1% dehydration, what does that mean for brain function and muscle contraction speeds? Wow, considerably different. 2% hydration, holy shit. 3% heart rate up, like, resting heart rate up like crazy just naturally like holy cow so it's a it's a huge factor um and and everybody we're testing is pretty much coming in dehydrated all the time and uh and there's something called reds i I don't know what it actually stands for the nutrition that that taught me it works for designs for sports and she's just teaching me it but we've noticed it too that under eating calories they're just not getting enough calories in you know, calories are very important to get in for athletes, especially young, evolving athletes. Um, and then, then I look at protein and fats and stuff like that. But I, I'll look at hydration and calories first. Like, let's make sure we're getting that off. If you're a shitty eater, I don't care. I want you hitting this calorie in the market. I want you being hydrated. And you'll see, you'll see them just say, I feel great. And then maybe I can get a win with protein down the, after that and things like that. Now, the pros, again, I'm very, very fortunate. You know, I've got two practitioners I work with that are uh, – the best in the world when it comes to blood work based nutrition. So Chris Talley out of Cal, you know, uh, LA with precision food, uh, food works. He's just incredible. He was the head physiologist, uh, of NASA for nine years in charge of all the astronauts and how I met him. It was very interesting how I met him. I was fascinated with athletes losing strength and they'd come back at the end of the year, their season and like down to baseline power and speed again. Right. I'm like, what happened here? Like, I don't, at the end of the year, you're at your weakest and less power. That's not good, right? And looking at muscle mass and things like that. And, and you know, started, started trying some different protocols and kind of figured out that maintaining lean muscle throughout the year anchors some power and some strength where you don't have to train it as much, right? Because these guys are beat up and they don't want to train strength and power that much. But if you maintain lean mass and you're measuring that, uh, you know, the, the, the research is pretty clear. Right around four pounds of lean mass loss, you're looking at a 20% decrease in power and a 20% increase in injury. 
So keeping the muscle on them in season will anchor some of the power and some of the strength so they don't have to really train it that much because they don't like to train it during the season, There's a lot of the skill guys especially. So I started researching how can I find ways without training protocols, lots of volume, to keep muscle on them. Why don't I go to the guy that's in charge of astronauts <laughs> Who, go ahead and go ahead and get sick. You know, I'm just coming off a of surgery, so lay in bed for a week when you're sick or injured. How do your muscles feel? Pretty terrible. Soft. Terrible. You, there's still gravity there. There's still forces on there. Go up in space for three weeks with no forces. How do you think your muscles are going to feel? Ooh. Yeah, and this guy Chris Talley actually found ways through nutrition and supplementation to maintain lean mass on astronauts when they're in space. Taking a quick break from the show to talk to you guys about our sponsor, Team Builder. If you have any online training platform needs, Team Builder is the go-to place. Team Builder has the ability to integrate with velocity-based training tools. They have the ability to program and have notes and videos for all of your athletes and your clients. This is your number one stop shop. Been using it since 2019 when I was working at Towson. So I've used it, love it. Make sure you check it out. Go ahead, click the link down in the description. And with that, let's get back to the show. I'm like, I'm talking to that guy. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going. To- that sounds like a guy that you want to talk to. Right, right. So he's, he's helped me tremendously with looking at micronutrients with uh-huh. pro athletes and how to maintain lean mass and, and, and brain function and, and recovery functions and stuff like that. And the other guy is Jim Laval, who's a functional medicine guy who does blood work based nutrition as well, who will look at a lot of different factors and, you know, look at different ways so the pros and the olympics they they get right to that stuff right there so i i you know, i we they, there's no messing around with that but the other ones you got to start them on the journey where they're ready to step on the on the path right and if they're eating once or twice a day and junk food then i got to start them on let's just look at calories and hydration and let's start dovetailing in some protein then we'll dove, start dovetailing in maybe some some you know some post-workout stuff for recovery and hydration right away, you know, especially if they're doing two a days. Um, and then we start getting wins and we take them as far as they want to take them. But, um, yeah, it can make, it can make uh, a difference. Well, yeah. Oh no, keep going. Sorry. It's, 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 uh, it's hard to, I, I would say that the nutrition game, because you hear about the guys eating Skittles and, so right. performing well, right? Right. I will say that I can I can't claim that nutrition is going to improve your performance tremendously. Although at the high levels, you can see it. You can see a couple percent increase in in nutrition if they get their blood work done and fix some discrepancies or some you know. But I will say longevity, hundred percent. That's one thing I'm proud of. Is you know I've I've had hockey guys, one guy with a 21 year career in the NHL, three guys with 18 year careers handful of guys with 16 year careers in the NHL that I've worked with their whole career, like, you know, 12, 14 year careers, 10 year careers. And yeah, and that's, that's something I'm very proud of as well. To, to, you know, whatever piece, small piece I had in that, a lot of luck and a lot of other people working with these guys, but um, a lot of work on my end, making sure that things are working well in the, in the movements that they need to be moving with. And, and uh, and I think the nutrition can help make a big make a big play in the longevity part. Uh, one of the one of the questions that I have for you is, you know, over the course of this conversation, just how, like you said, calm, cool, and collective. Not only yeah. the best are, but I've noticed that with your personality. A, have you always been that way? But B, <clears throat> if you have not, what have been some of the tools to help you get that way? Because that's an unbelievable quality to have as a coach, especially if you're working with these high level athletes. And like you said, you, you, you know, you're, you're on that razor thin line of, you know, we got to train them hard, but you got to keep them healthy and they need to be able to perform because their livelihood depends on that. Like, yeah. How are you able to stay so calm doing all of that? Like, that's impressive. Yeah. Well, again, it, you know, if, if you're, if I'm being honest and I think Dan Paff and some of these older coaches tell you the same thing, probably wasn't until my mid 40s that I really felt comfortable and confident in stuff we're doing right it was really like second guessing a lot but I, I think the same thing some of the special forces I, so I I've dealt with some sports psych guys that have worked with athletes and stuff and and I, and I found sports psychology to be uh, psychology with the word sport in front of it three year four year process I'm like no this athlete's got a world championship in six months they're freaking out in their head I need faster help I've learned a tremendous amount from special operators, whether it's Delta Force guys, SEAL team guys, especially the commanders. 
and some of the stuff they've you know way beyond the t- typical self help bullshit. You know what I mean? That you'll that you'll read and you know and that stuff has us. Maybe it's the first step in the journey, right? But uh, you know these guys, they just understand how to frame things properly, how to make sure you're feeling safe. Congratulations on making it to the end of the video. Why don't you celebrate by watching more videos just like it? You can also help us on our quest to placate the algorithm gods by liking, sharing, subscribing, and commenting. Thank you.